Okay, I'm pretty excited about this. This is Unocart with the firmware modifications I've been working on. So this is more or less the standard loader on the Ultimate One Megabyte. I had to make a small modification to it because unfortunately when the Uno cart uh, is off the bus, busy retrieving SD card sectors, uh, while theoretically the data bus on the XL model should be pulled up, which would neatly um, simulate the busy bit, which is bit 7 of the IDE status register, because we're, to be clear, we're emulating the IDE protocol with this firmware. Uh, it sort of works, um, so the pulled up data bus should inherently keep bit 7 of the status register equal to 1, but it's a bit flaky. Uh, Jürgen suggests that might actually be a timing issue, um, because on paper it should actually work perfectly well on the XL, but it'll never work on the XE, because the data bus is... Uh, it just floats on the XE, so I had to patch the loader such that it looks for a specific combination of bits when it's waiting for the drive to become ready, and that makes it reliable uh, on either machine. So we have a very slightly, one tiny modification to the loader, and the other modification we've got to the loader is that... Uh, at the moment... It only works with 8K ROMs, but what happens here is that if we press enter on a ROM file, currently only an 8K ROM file, but we should be able to do all the all the banking schemes that Robin handles as well. Uh, the fat loader opens the file, reads it into a RAM window in the cartridge ROM area, so it opens a window, a banked window to the same RAM on the cartridge that Robin's loader uh, loads via the FATFS driver. In this case we're dealing with raw sectors, so the the loader actually reads sectors from the IDE, the emulated IDE register, <laughs> and then writes them back into the cartridge again um, through this window. So if we press, I've just got this working, so if we press enter here we should see a very quick burst of drive activity as the loader opened the window, the RAM window, read the file into it. Uh, obviously in the final version I guess pressing enter would uh, immediately reboot the machine uh, if you press control enter or something to suppress the um, the reboot. But anyway that cartridge should be mounted now and then you could go along and uh, mount your ATRs as well, anything you wanted. So the two should work together, the, the hard disk and the cartridge, that was the whole idea here. So if we now go back to the BIOS screen, and we've got the hard disk enabled, uh, which is running also off the SD card. Um, a bit hoarse this morning, sorry about that. Went to quiz last night and had to shout a lot. Because um, the guy is very loud. He's got he's got a microphone. He's mic'd up this guy who does the quiz and he's just... It's absolute, I feel like I've been clubbing, basically. Um, so now if we reboot the system with Spartados X enabled, okay. And this, so it should boot from... It should read config sys from the hard drive on drive C. Okay. We should be able to get a directory of drive C. There you go, so that's off the... I'll do that again. So that you can see that this is actually coming off the SD card. There you go. Now, if we type car... Bearing in mind that none of the internal basic slots on the Ultimate One Megabyte respond to the car command, this is P 
purely an external cartridge so this is this cart ROM is on the UNO cart as well as the hard disk so we type car and we go into Alt Altera Basic which is what I just loaded in the loader and then we type directory as well to show that we have the hard disk working as well as the um, cartridge there we go do that again so there we go hard disk and up external cartridge so assuming that I don't hit any brick walls with uh, timing because the the polling loops are pretty busy obviously having to handle the hard disk and the ROMs together um, obviously be able to turn one or the other off you might just want to use a, the hard disk without the cartridges or vice versa um, in which case you'd have the choice of either just using the cartridge standalone because I think I'll uh, leave I'll make this extra uh, an extra functionality on top of what Robin's already done rather than uh, replacing it although it would be interesting to actually put the loader just as an experiment not because uh, not because there's anything wrong with Robin's loader but just as, as an experiment to put the side loader on the cartridge to see if it were, how it would run standalone. There's no reason why it wouldn't work. Um, but that's that's by the board. The main the main point of this is to get the thing to work with um, the internal ROMs, the internal loader on the Ultimate One Megabyte. So I hope that and it's not very spectacular, but uh, it should be a bit more interesting when we're able to run stuff like Action and Mac 65 and things like that that should be a better illustration of what we're actually doing but uh, yeah so that's where we are at the moment I just got that working because I've made a complete balls up of the um, the cartridge handling I basically uh, I replaced what I'd written with uh, Robin's original code which specifically that handled the internal ROM the loader ROM on the cartridge um, but really there's many different ways of, of accomplishing the same thing um, but yeah I just went back to his code and Robin's code works and there we go it suddenly began to work after about two hours of faffing around last night uh, it works great so kind of interesting so I'm not quite sure how far we can go with it but uh, it looks like it's going to be viable there's still a few problems I can't get the I can't read uh, the SD info structure from the drive for some reason uh, so that's why we get um, generic information uh, on the card so uh, SD card 15 gigs the serial number and the uh, some other information is just generated um, as, as generic information because I can't get anything, I can't get the size, the, the card capacity out of the structure and the other thing I can't seem to do is reinitialize a card after I hot swap it um, so a couple of teething problems but uh, yeah it's, it's not working too badly at all and, the, and this, the throughput on the card, interesting observation about the throughput of the card uh, using uh, I think uh, pulled reads of the SD card uh, I couldn't get SDIO mode to work the whole thing just locks up then for some reason um, it's in the when on an IDE card like compact flash card uh, I timed the responses uh, the, the, the latency when you ask for a sector from the drive uh, and like Avery's Video player relies on this occurring in about four milliseconds. So that the, from the time that the 6502 asks the IDE controller for a sector, to that sector actually being ready to read, is typically in the in under the four milliseconds uh, period. Uh, and I tested this uh, SD card uh, implementation, and we're looking at about well, it's over a frame, so it's probably about 25 milliseconds. 
before you get a card. So that equates to about 45 kilobytes per second read speed. Um, so if anybody familiar with the Uno card firmware has any ideas about how we can run the card faster, that would certainly be interesting to hear about, or any ideas about uh, why I'm having problems with uh, the uh, the um, is it the CS CSI information in the in the structure? I forget now. Um, I'll be putting all this source code up on GitHub at some point so you can play with it and have a look at it. Um, I don't know if I'll support this thing in the release version of the firmware. It doesn't really require much work to do so, but um, I think it's sort of a bit. It would be a bit rushed to uh, maybe in an update later on if if this thing actually gets used at all um, out in the wild. I could. Um, make a little alternative build of the ultimate firmware that specifically supports this card um, and I mean for the the thing with the um, cartridge loading is actually it's so simple it sounds convoluted to read information from the SD card and <laughs> uh, via the CPU and then write it back to the card you might think, well, why not just ask the cartridge to um, load the file internally using the FATFS? Well, this does this implementation doesn't use the FATFS library in any way, shape, or form, aside from uh, low-level sector I/O. All the FAT is handled inside the loader by the Atari itself, so it was pretty convenient to just let the Atari let the loader handle. Uh, the, the fat file structure and it's very very simple um, there's not much code required to load this load a cart image obviously up to 128k into this uh, banked window it's just repeatedly bursting 8k blocks into this uh, little banked window um, very uh, economical and uh, seems to work so we'll see how we can get on with banked cartridges next and uh, yes, yeah, so that, that's, that's it for now. So I thought you might be interested in how that's going. And uh, thank you for watching.